Well, here it is guys, finally the finished Moon to Mars transport system. It's been an epic couple of months putting this thing together, ordering the parts from around the world, and I'm quite pleased with the way that it's turned out. This little video is to show you some of the details of the inside of the model, some of the different sections, and highlight what I've done, and some of the tributes that I've made to NASA as well. And I also got this amazing gift from Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. Was not expecting that at all, and I put that into the video as well. Hope you enjoy. We're on a mission to stop bullying, solve emergencies, and help create the next generation of innovators. Go to awesomeclub.co, download our free app, and sign up to the Awesome Club to become part of something inspirational. Space is there, and we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there, and new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. Here is a quick tour of the Moon to Mars transport system. Solar arrays. Control room. Uh, Houston, this is MMTS. Do you copy? Robotic arm. Thrusters. Pizzeria. Gymnasium. Artificial gravity belt. Research laboratory. Health and Well-Being Center. Recreational Space and Facilities. Rocket Engines. Bedroom and Private Quarters. Hydroponic Plant and Vegetation Laboratory Communications Dish Medical Bay Thank you for choosing to travel to Mars on the MMTS. Have a safe and pleasant journey. Well, I just got an awesome surprise. I just got home from work and found this amazing package on my doorstep of one of my favorite astronauts of all time, Chris Hadfield. Uh, Chris Hadfield was famous for many, many reasons, but um, I sort of really got to like him when I saw him perform on the ISS, that famous song by David Bowie, Space Oddity. This is ground control to Major Tom. It was absolutely brilliant, got lots and lots of hits, and I actually showed videos of Chris Hadfield to my students 
uh, around the Canada Realm when I was doing robotics classes and absolutely loved his Master Series, thought that was just incredible to get this as a complete surprise, I wasn't expecting it, uh, it wasn't actually part of the prize or anything like that, it was just him being incredibly generous with his time and writing for Steve, congrats. So thank you so much if you're watching this Chris Hadfield, you're a legend, my students love you and uh, I love you too mate, you're a legend. In a most peculiar way And the stars look very different The LEGO team informed me that Chris Hadfield had noticed the guitar in my original model and he thought that was a nice touch and so I made sure to include that in my finished physical build and if you look through the dome on the side of the MMTS you'll see that in one of the main bedrooms. Before I go any further I'd love to thank the NASA team for asking me to do this in the first place. If it wasn't for Theron Protz from NASA and the team asking me to do a physical build, this would have always just remained a digital design and something that was floating in my head. So to see this sitting in front of me now is quite emotional for me. This has been one of the most epic projects of my life and certainly one of the highlights of my career. And I had an absolute ball, uh, not only building it, but working and liaising with the Lego team and talking to the NASA team. And so here it is, the finished product. It will be in the Kennedy Space Center later on in 2020. And I very much look forward to going back over there and visiting the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral and seeing this in the Journey to Mars section. So thank you all for those that have supported me and watched uh, my other videos. Special thanks to the Lego team for actually not only sending me a lot of the parts for this, but encouraging me as well. Um, they have been a fantastic team. The Lego Ideas guys are just brilliant. I encourage what they're doing and how they're inspiring students and uh, people around the world to create. Special thanks to the Awesome Club team for getting behind me for this and to the School Locker for supporting me and to all of my friends and family, for, especially my wife, for putting up with the many, many hours that I spent uh, building this in my spare time. So thank you guys. If you ever get a chance to see this model at the Kennedy Space Center, you can look down the front of the Moon to Mars Transport System control room. Right down the front, you'll see a Lego tile just above the entry point, which is actually a tribute to the NASA Space Shuttle program, in particular the Shuttle Atlantis, which is actually on display at the Kennedy Space Center and is one of the most important shuttles in history. Did 33 different space missions, was absolutely crucial in delivering parts to the uh, International Space Station and uh, telescopes and things like that. So very very important part of our history and I thought it would be really pertinent to do a tribute to the shuttle program. A huge problem that faces us as we do long-term space missions is the lack of gravity. If you don't have gravity for too long, our muscles and bones start to deteriorate. Um, that's why the astronauts do a lot of working out in space. And so what I've done is created an artificial gravity belt, also known as a centrifugal force-based gravity belt. And this is designed to simulate uh, gravity in space. And uh, currently it's science fiction, but there's a lot of discussions around whether this is plausible or not. And so I just thought I'd put this in as a representation to talk about the need for gravity implications or the lack of gravity implications for long-term space missions considering it would take you know anywhere between six months to two years to go between Earth and the Moon and Mars this is a very important discussion. Another really important implication of long-term space travel is the need to grow your own food in space. Uh, NASA have a thing called a space farm, which is basically a greenhouse that is temperature controlled and the light is artificially lit um, and it also employs hydroponic systems, which basically means that all the nutrients that the plants need is given to the plant through water-based systems as opposed to through soil like we do normally on Earth. Having a lot of soil in space is a lot of extra weight that you just don't want to have when launching um, missions into space. And so hydroponic plant systems are a very efficient way of growing food and vegetables in space and this would be very very important it also means that the astronauts don't have to put up with rehydrated or dehydrated food in space for the entire six months to two years or three years in space you might have noticed that there was a robotic arm in the pictures which actually wasn't in the original model. I decided that I would add this in as an extra as very easily detachable from the model uh, but I thought I'd put that in just because a lot of the uh, shuttles and International Space Station use robotic arms to do a lot of assembly. Every time they can use the robotic arm it means that they're not risking the life of an astronaut going outside of the safety of the confines of the spacecraft and so I just thought this would be an extra advantage for the model and absolutely no necessity for NASA to use this 
the Kennedy Space Center, but I thought I'd give them the option to put it on just in case. Well, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to The Awesome Club. We do this to try and inspire students to create and be innovative and be encouraged. We're trying to stop bullying. We're trying to get everyone in an inclusive environment to work together and contribute to this incredible idea of educating each other and inspiring and having fun while you learn. As a teacher, this is really important for me. I was bullied when I was a kid and it was quite impacting in, in my life. And so we're trying to do good things to help students, especially those students that might be having a hard time at school and hard time learning. So we've put together Together, um, the awesome club we've made this app keys to edu and it's free you can download it and you can get involved any any way you can if you're a teacher get involved if you're a student get involved if you're a parent get involved uh, we're trying to do good things we're trying to help communities we're trying to help schools most importantly we're trying to help students have fun as they learn